So this is the fading sound of the gong. Notice how the gong sound fades. That you who notices it are always here. Pay attention to the thoughts passing through your mind. The beliefs, the stories, they coming and they go. The I thought, the me thought. All thoughts come and go, but you, who is aware of them, are always here. Your true nature is pure, alive, vibrant consciousness or awareness. That's as close as we can say what it is. And it's here right now. We, the awareness that we are is here right now in this very moment, this timeless, spacious, flowing moment of now. So just open your eyes now and look around. And look at yourself because when in this place of pure awareness, pure consciousness, there's really only one of us. But when we look at others, others manifest in different bodies and minds and personalities. But in the deepest level of our being, we are one. That's the whole thing about the, the Indian word namaste, right? Which means in its longer version, when gr they greet each other in India and say namaste, they're saying, I honor the place in you where the entire universe resides. I honor the place in you of love, light, truth, beauty, and peace. I honor the place in you where if you're in that place in you, and I'm in that place in me, there's only one of us. Namaste. So at a core essential nature, we are one. We have a body, we have a mind, we have a personality, we have thoughts and stories, we have an ego, we have the I thought, the me thought, but we're not them because they all come and go, they all shift and change. What we are is this awareness or present, presence which is always here. And realizing that is freedom. Realizing that is liberation. Realizing that is self-realization, when you realize that you are not your story, you're not your thoughts, you're not your ego, but you're still here as this beautiful, flowing, present awareness that is here now. And when you've realized your true nature, it produces a feeling of exhilaration, because wow, it's, it's an empowering feeling to be free. And the emotional state, when you realize your true nature, is always one of ease and harmony and flow, well-being. You always feel basically good inside. And then you're human, so you have human reactions. You know, when someone you love dies, you'll be sad, of course. When someone you love is missing, you're concerned. Right. But it's... The more, the freer you are, the more your realization produces a feeling of basically you know you're okay with whatever happens. And even when someone dies or gets sick, ultimately you're okay with it. Because you're always living in the present. Here now is the only place there is. It's not even a place, it's a being here now, right? This, this experience of us gathered in the room, being together. We can call it a place, but really it's just a, a flow of being. And life happens. The plane passes overhead. And maybe it's full of passengers and they're all having their experience of reality. But the one thing I know is that when people are self-realized, awake, conscious, they all have the same fundamental experience. In other words, other teachers who are holding gatherings like this, if they're awake and realized, they have the same exact experience we are. Just the experience of pure being. Pure oneness. 
pure consciousness, manifesting in a dynamic, vibrant, empowering way. We honor the past, we keep an eye on the future, we live right here now. This is it, right here, right now. And then from this place of being here now, you act if your action is needed. You think if thought is needed. So when you know you're not your mind, then the mind becomes available as a powerful creative tool to ponder, communicate, create, celebrate life. My friend Eric Shippen said once uh, 30 years ago, the mind is the ultimate toy. We were taking a walk in Annadale State Park in Santa Rosa. That's a good, as good a definition as any. The mind is the ultimate toy because we can create with it. Everything in this room, the clothes we're wearing, the jet flying overhead, all began as an idea in someone's mind. That's how powerful the mind is. So the mind is, so the mind is very powerful. And when you get your I out of your mind, when you get the me out of the mind, that truly liberates the power of the mind. And the awakening or enlightenment or self-realization is essentially becoming free of the self, the small self. You realize you're not the small self, this petty I, this egotistical me. You're not that at all. You are the pure eye of your being, and you have an ego. But then when you're coming from your pure eye, your totality of being, then your ego becomes a magnificent um, servant. Ramakrishna said the ego makes a very poor master, but a very good servant. So we all have an ego. But when you know you're not your ego, then it's available to serve you. And so the freedom is really being free of psychological and emotional thought because when you no longer take yourself to be a psychological emotional person because you're free, because you realize your true nature, then um, you're, um, you're free of psychological and emotional thinking. So you no longer have the psychological and emotional reactions that people have when they take themselves to be a person a psychological person, so that the, the emotions that come with it being and taking yourself to be a person are guilt, shame, blame, anger, resentment, jealousy, envy. These are all human emotions which come when you take yourself to be a psychological person, which I did for until I was 49. And then I, I was on this journey for 20 years of waking up of the spiritual journey and then I finally woke up and realized my true nature in 2049 and uh, I've been free ever since. But awakening is an event in time. It happens when we see that we're not this I, this me. We're not anything between our ears. The whole reality, reality between our ears is unreal. It's illusory. Sometimes people on the spiritual path say, uh, the, particularly on this kind of strict non-dual approach, they'll say, oh, the world is illusion anyway. But it's not illusion. Our bodies are real. Pain is real. Circumstances are real when they happen. The illusion is between our ears. That's the real illusion. When we see that nothing between our ears is real, it's all illusory. And yet we as the seer, the one who experiences and watches and bees, we're still very much here as these aware conscious beings. So we just breathe and relax into being here now. And we, um, the talk I just gave was a, a dialogue on freedom, you might say. I tripped on freedom, and now I'm just being. But I always, even though I was just tripping on freedom, 
I was coming from being. Because that's the thing, when you realize your true nature, you're always coming from being. And out of being, you do what you need to do, or what you have to do, or what you love to do. So being always gives rise to doing, or as the Adade Jing says, the way to do is to be. The way to do is to be. The very thought of where I should be is a story that you're telling yourself which keeps you out of being in present. I say somewhere in the book, the, the future is simply the present expanding. So when you live in the present, then, um, which is here now, then um, everything is beautiful. I'm talking about the inner journey, discovering who and what we are. As we allow, so what do we know? What do we know? Essentially, that there is no separation. That we are one with everything, and only this present moment, right here now, exists. Our true nature, in other words, our true I or self, is pure, spacious, timeless consciousness, expressing through these bodies minds and personalities known as us. As we allow this realization to sink in, it's like breathing pure oxygen. We feel ex exhilarated, rejuvenated, and empowered. We, we've reconnected to pure existence itself, our true authentic nature. Our emotional state is one of ease, harmony, and flow and an immense gratitude for life. Now the outer journey begins in earnest, learning to embody this presence, wisdom and love that is ours in the busy marketplace of life. We use the power of thought, of story, to ponder, communicate, create, and above all, connect with others, with our community, in a deep, conscious, heartfelt way. That's what it's all about. Connecting with others in a deep, conscious, heartfelt way. This is the bottom line. This is the true meaning of satsang.